other children celebrate their birthdays. They probably wake up to congratulations from their parents and jump out of bed, anticipating wonderful gifts and a happy and joyful day. But Doris never had such a holiday. Today, on her 17th birthday, she woke up as usual to her mother's angry shouts at her father. The woman was in a bad mood with a hangover. Dad didn't answer her. He quickly packed up and left the house, slamming the door. Soon her mother left for work too, never remembering her daughter's birthday. In the evening, her parents returned with their friends, Anne and Paul. Paul was already drunk, and as usual, grabbed Doris by the hand and whispered, stammering that at 17, it was possible to do more than just kiss. Doris shoved him off and wanted to leave, but her mother ordered her to prepare the table for all their merry company. Doris did not want to argue. She knew that her father might hit her for arguing. She fried the potatoes, cut the vegetables, and set the table. After that, she left the house so she wouldn't have to listen to the parents and guests having fun. She sat in the park on a bench. It was already dark and only a dim lantern illuminated her sad figure. Joggers were running by and couples in love were walking by. Suddenly, someone stopped in front of her. Doris looked up and saw a young man of about 25 with a pimply and attractive face, wearing an old shirt. He handed her a rose, obviously picked from a flower bed in the park, and smiled. No need to be sad on such a warm summer evening, especially not for such a beautiful girl. Doris blushed. She'd never been given flowers or complimented before. She sat there and did not know what to say. The guy laughed and asked permission to sit next to her. She gave her permission and they got to talking. Her new acquaintance's name was Ray and he lived in the neighboring district with his mother. He did not know his father, but there were three stepfathers, none of whom ever stayed. Ray's mother was a very bossy woman. Men did not like her. Dorsal told him about her life, about how she was tired of the constant drinking in the house, about how she dreamed of a better future, how she dreamed of leaving her father and mother who had never loved her. The girl sobbed and Ray suddenly hugged her. Doris trembled and shyly pulled away from him, lowering her eyes. He was surprised, looking at her intently, then turned her face toward him with his palms and said firmly, You know, I want to marry you. I want a wife like that, modest and homely. Will you marry me? Doris didn't know what to say. She was only 17. Besides, she didn't really like Ray. She imagined her future husband not like him. But Ray seemed simple kind, and besides, he didn't drink. Moreover, she had dreamed of leaving her parents for a long time. When would she have such an opportunity? A week later, Ray drove to her with a friend. They put Doris's meager belongings in the car and left. So another life began for Doris. Mrs. Allen, Ray's mother, met her son's girlfriend coldly. She looked at her with a nagging look, pursed her lips and said, Okay, live for now. If you cross me, I'll kick you out. I won't regret it. Got it. And Doris understood. She did not want to return home, so she made a promise to herself that she would try to be a good wife and daughter-in-law. But it was hard. Mrs. Allen made her do a lot of housework, scolded her for tasteless food and poorly ironed laundry. Doris never heard a kind, warm word from Mrs. Allen. And soon she realized that Ray was as hard in character as his mother. Only occasionally was he tender with Doris, but for those rare moments, she was ready to endure rudeness and do all the cores. She did not love her husband, but she just wanted a little warmth and tenderness, which she had never seen from her drinking parents. Three years after Doris and Ray began living together, they had a daughter, Molly. Doris repeatedly brought up the question of marriage, but Ray kept shrugging it off. As a single mother, you're entitled to all sorts of extra benefits. Let's use it to the max and then get married. Thus, we're living together anyway. Why do you care? I'm not giving up on you and my daughter. Doris was upset, but agreed wholeheartedly. She convinced herself it would be better this way. Ray did not kick her out, promised to marry her, and most importantly, he did not drink at all. Three more years passed. Doris got used to her mother-in-law's nagging. A's rudeness? She did not know another good quiet life, so she did not even think of leaving Ray, and there was nowhere else to go, not back to her parents. They still were not married, but Doris considered Ray as her husband. And how could it be otherwise? Even though she could not love Ray with all her heart, he was the only man in her life. Besides, they had a daughter. So who was he to her if not her husband? Doris found a job as a saleswoman at a local grocery store. Molly started going to kindergarten. Doris was happy with her quiet life, but one day a local hairdresser came into the store and snidely said, Mon your happiness is over. 
Yurei started drinking again. Asked now, hold on. Dorst didn't understand. How could he start drinking again? He had never even been drinking. But when she came home in the evening, she was horrified to see her husband asleep on the sofa. He was dead drunk, and Mrs. Allen was sitting next to him crying. She told Doris, it was only in his 20s that he managed to cope with his addiction. Just before he met you, I was thrilled to see you in my house, because I hoped that family life would keep my son from drinking. But as you can see, it lasted only five years. For the first time, Mrs. Allen spoke to Doris in a normal tone. Doris, don't leave us. I'm afraid to be alone with him, and I love my granddaughter. Forgive me for treating you this way. I have a terrible temper, but I was afraid to get used to you. I was afraid to love you. I thought if Ray started drinking again, you'd leave us right away. Doris, you won't leave us, will you? Mrs. Allen wiped the tears from her eyes with trembling fingers and looked at Doris. Hopefully, Doris felt sorry for her, and she promised. But meanwhile, life had become a nightmare. Ray was now drinking every day. There was nothing that stopped him, not a word of persuasion. Soon he was fired from his job and had to take on part-time jobs. At home he did nothing but sleep or drink. The thing he didn't raise his hands to the women. Doris put up with this terrible situation, just because she had promised Mrs. Allen. A few more years passed like that. Three morning, Doris took Molly to school and ran to work. Molly had already learned to read, and all the way they... The way there she looked everywhere for different words the street. They walked down to school, had many different stores, companies, cars, and buses going by Molly turned her head and read everything and Doris laughed happy that her clever daughter was growing up one day. Doris suddenly noticed that a man standing near the bus stop on the other side of the street was looking at them. The man was looking and smiling slightly, Doris shrugged a little and suddenly nodded at him. He nodded his head in response to from that day. On they met every morning, Doris and Molly would walk to school and the man would stand at the bus stop and smile and wave at them, Mom. That man is nice, Molly, suddenly said, Wine, day, let's go up to him and say hello. Please, my dear, we can't go up to strangers. Daddy would scold us set. Doris Molly calmly replied, Daddy is always drunk, and scolds he doesn't like us at all, and this man is nice. I know do you like him, Doris blushed. She had long ago realized that she often thought of this man, and every morning she dreaded not seeing him. Doris became so thoughtful that even Mrs. Allen noticed it, and directly asked if Doris had found a man. Doris shuddered and shook her head, but the older woman only sighed sorrowfully. She did not believe her one morning Doris was walking down the street with Molly and suddenly saw the stranger right in her way. He was holding a bouquet of daffodils. In his hand when Doris approached him, he said with a smile, you know, I had a dream today that it was your birthday. I bought the flowers, I planted them myself, the man handed. Doris the daffodils and hurriedly added my name is Connor you'll forgive being for waiting for you every morning I actually want to see you and your wonderful daughter every day you see my wife died shortly after our wedding she was pregnant I couldn't forget her for a long time but I saw you and it was as if I began to live again I'm sorry if I said anything wrong you you must be married Doris looked at him and was silent she was almost crying my mom's birthday is the day after tomorrow you had the wrong dream Molly said with an important look my mom's name is Doris she's a little shy she works over there around the corner in the store the store and I'm her daughter Molly Doris tugged at her daughter's hand trying to stop her but the girl paid no attention Connor laughed and held out the flowers to Doris she was embarrassed but took them in the evening of the same day, Connor came to Doris's store. There were hardly any customers, and they talked until closing time. From that day on, they saw each other every day. Doris told Connor about Ray, who never married her, about his alcoholism, and how she had made a promise to his mother. The man listened to her and didn't say anything. He only gently touched a strand of hair on her head. Doris felt that she had fallen in love with Connor. She felt sorry for Ray and his mother, but she could no longer live the old way. A month later, Connor invited Doris to leave Ray and move into his house with Molly. Doris dreamed about it, but she did not dare. She was afraid of becoming a traitor, a cheater. Exhausted, she decided to tell Mrs. Allen everything honestly. In the evening after work, she went into Ray's mother's room and begged her to listen to what she had to say. When Doris finished, Mrs. Allen cried. I knew that one day you would meet a good man worthy of you. You were kind, thrifty, honest. My Ray is not the kind of husband you deserve. I know that. You can't change him now. I let him out of my care as a child. I spoiled him. 
It's my cross to bear with him. Doris embraced the sorrowful woman and they cried together. A few days later, Doris and Molly moved in with Connor. Ray came to them a couple of times yelling, even threatening, but soon calmed down and forgot about them. On the other hand, Mrs. Allen did not forget about her granddaughter. She often brought presents and took care of Molly when she was sick. She and Doris became very close. Ray got really down and a year later, he drowned drunk on a fishing trip. Mrs. Allen understood that her son was on his way to this, but still she was grief-stricken. She broke down physically and mentally, and Doris persuaded Connor to take her their place. She took care of her and eventually got her back on her feet. And when Connor and Doris had twin boys, Mrs. Allen became a caring grandmother to them too. Sometimes Doris felt guilty about Ray, but looking at her children and her beloved husband, she was very happy and hoped that she deserved this happiness.